DSPy is a framework for solving advanced tasks using language models and retrieval models. It offers the flexibility to algorithmically optimize language model prompts and weights. Traditionally, when building a system with a language model, obtaining a response requires crafting a detailed prompt. If dealing with reasoning-based questions, further guidance is needed to direct the language model step-by-step -step on how to approach the question, a technique known as chain-of-thought prompting. Similarly, various prompt engineering techniques exist, and based on your task and use case, you need to keep iterating your prompt. However, this process is challenging as language models are sensitive to the prompts they receive. That's where DSPy comes in. Instead of using a prompt template or crafting a detailed prompt for an LLM, you can simply define your task and the metrics you want to maximize and prepare a few example inputs. DSPy will then optimize your language model weights and instructions for you. DSPy introduces three simple concepts to solve this. First, signatures, which assign tasks to language models, specifying the input-output behavior of a DSPy module. Next, modules serve as the building blocks for programs which are also called as larger modules that utilize language models. Each built-in module abstracts a prompting technique, such as chain of thought or react, and is generalized to handle the DSPy signature. Finally, optimizers, which are algorithms capable of tuning the parameters of a DSPy program that is prompts or language model weights to maximize specified metrics, such as accuracy, leading to better prompts than those written manually by us. I hope you get a basic idea of what DSPy is. We will be looking more into the signatures and modules later in this video. Obviously, to build these systems with DSPy, you require LLMs and for certain tasks, in which the LLM didn't have the knowledge you require a vector database to store and retrieve information, providing context for the LLM to answer. That's where Clarify comes in, a full-stack AI platform that helps you to take vision, language, and audio AI into production. With the Clarify DSPy integration, you can access LLMs from the Clarify community and also build a retrieval model using the Clarify vector database. In this video, we will see how you can access the LLMs and also the vector database to build a retrieval augmented generation system. Here is the Colab notebook. First, let's install Clarify and DSPy with a pip command. Next, import DSPy and the Clarify retrieval model from dspy.retriever. Now, you need to obtain your personal access token from Clarify in order to access the LLMs in Vector Store. To create a new personal access token, Sign up for Clarify or, if you already have an account, log in to the portal. Click on your profile icon in the top right corner and select the security option under Settings. Now create a new personal access token by giving a token description and selecting the scopes. Copy the token and pass it here. Next, let's get your user ID. Since you already signed up to the platform, you can find your user ID under the Account option in the Settings. Next, let's create a new application in Clarify to upload your documents. Applications are the basic building blocks for creating projects on the Clarify platform. Your data, annotations, models, predictions, and searches are contained within applications. Once you upload the data to the Clarify application, it will embed the data and index the embeddings based on your base workflow. You can use those embeddings to query for similarity. To create an app, you can go to the Clarify page on the top right click on Create a New Application. Just pass the app ID, a short description, select the input type, text in this case, and you can see the base workflow set to the general text embedding model. This is really key as the data will be embedded based on your base workflow. Since the data type here is text, selecting the text embedding workflow. Now, a new Clarify app named DSPy has been created. Get your app underscore ID, DSPy in this case, and pass it here. Next, you need an LLM, and Clarify provides many third-party and open-source LLMs. You can just go to the Clarify community, navigate to the Models section, filter for LLMs. You can see there are several LLMs. Choose your preferred LLM. I am selecting Llama 270B chat model in this case. Click on it, copy the model URL, and pass it here. We have the personal access token, 
clarify user ID, app ID, and the model URL. Now, to use Clarify as a retriever, all you have to do is ingest your documents into the Clarify app, which serves as your vector database, and then you can retrieve similar documents. You can do this using the Clarify Langchain integration. First, install Langchain. Next, import the required modules from Langchain. Text Loader to load data from the source as documents. Character Text Splitter to split the text into chunks. Also, import the Clarify Vector Store from Langchain.VectorStores. Here, I am using the State of the Union report, which is a text file. I am loading the file using Text Loader and splitting the document into chunks. I am setting the chunk size to 1024 and ensuring there is no overlap in chunking by setting the chunk overlap to zero. Chunking is the process of breaking down large pieces of text into smaller segments, and it helps optimize the relevance of the content we get back from a vector database. If our chunks are too small or too large, it may lead to imprecise search results. Now using the from underscore documents function, let's create the clarify vector store by passing the user ID, app ID, the document, and personal access token. Run it. We have successfully ingested the data into the Clarify app, which acts as your vector store. Now, let's try to initialize the LLM using Clarify from DSPy. Make sure to pass your model URL, the personal access token. Also, pass all the model parameters such as max tokens and temperature in the inference parameters field. Next, let's initialize the Clarify Retriever model class by passing your user ID, app ID, and personal access token. Remember to pass your app ID in which you have ingested your data. I am using the app DSPy, which we have previously used to ingest the data. Finally, configure the DSPy with both the LLM and Retriever model. Let's look at an example of sentiment classification using the LLM. Here's the sentence. Disney again ransacks its archives for a quick buck sequel. Now, I am defining the signature. As I mentioned, when we assign tasks to language models in DSPy, we specify the desired behavior as a signature. Signatures allow you to instruct the language model on what it needs to do, rather than specifying how we should ask the language model to do it. For example, for question answering tasks, the input is question, and the output is answer, so you can simply define the signature as question answer. For sentiment classification tasks, you can define the input as sentence and the output as sentiment. And similarly, for summarization tasks, you can define the input as document and output as summary. You can notice that writing signatures is far more modular and reproducible than defining long prompts. Once you define the signature, the DSPy compiler will figure out how to build a highly optimized prompt for your language model. That's the major advantage of DSPy. Since we are doing sentiment classification, I am defining the signature here. Now I am passing this signature to the predict module from DSPy and then declaring the module. Finally, passing the sentence to classify and getting the sentiment. You can see the result here, it's negative. That's how you can use LLMs from Clarify with DSPy. Similarly, let's look at how to use the retriever. I am using the retrieve method from DSPy and passing the parameter k equals to one. Here, k represents the number of relevant passages that the retriever will return. Since we have specified one here, it will return only one relevant passage from the vector store. I am passing the question, what is test to treat, which is from the above document that we have ingested. Here is the relevant context that the retriever returned. We have seen how you can use LLMs and retriever from Clarify. Now, Let's look at how you can use them both for building a retrieval augmented generation application. If you are new and not sure about RAG, I would recommend you to check out the RAG in four lines of code video, which is in the description below. In that video, we explained what is RAG and demonstrated how you can build a RAG system in just four lines of code using the Clarify's Python SDK. But in short, RAG provides the context to the LLMs when answering questions that they are not aware of. Let's start by creating a RAG module. 
As I mentioned, modules in DSPy are building blocks for programs that uses language models, and each built-in module abstracts a prompting technique, like Chain of Thought or React. In general, these modules are designed to handle any signature. Previously, we have seen Predict, which is the most fundamental module, and all other modules are built using the Predict module. Now let's look at some of the modules. Let's start with the Predict module. This is a basic predictor that does not modify the signature. It just stores the instructions and updates to the language model. Next, Chain Off Thought module. This teaches the language model to think step-by-step -step before committing to the signature's response. The other module is Program of Thought, which teaches the language model to output code. Finally, React. This is an agent that can use tools to implement the given signature. These are some of the existing modules. You can also create your own modules. That's what we will be doing now, creating a RAG module with Clarify as a retriever. To create a module, you need to define the signature as we did in the previous case. However, instead of using the pre-existing inline signatures, let's create our own signature class. Here is the class Generate Answer. I am inheriting the signature class and then defining the simple input question and output answer along with their descriptions. Since we are building a RAG pipeline, we will be utilizing some contextual information from our Clarify vector database, so defining the context as well. Now, we will build our RAG pipeline as a DSPy module, which will require two methods. The init method will simply declare the submodules it needs, retrieve and chain off thought. The retriever is used to get the relevant context from our vector database, and the chain off thought is used to implement our generate answer signature. Next, the forward method will describe the control flow of answering the question using the modules we have. Given a question, first we'll search for the top three relevant passages and then feed them as context for answer generation. Finally, let's try out the RAG module. Here is the query, what is test to treat? And this is the generated response from the module along with the retrieved contexts. That's how you can use DSPy with Clarify for building RAG applications. You can even optimize your pipelines by providing some training data set and letting the module update its parameters based on a specified metric using the optimizers. You can also evaluate your pipeline and evaluate your retrieval model. You can even build complex pipelines, such as multi-hop questions, where a single search query is often not enough for complex question answering tasks and the systems need to read the retrieved results and then generate additional queries to gather additional information when necessary before arriving at a final answer. This is the first video in the DSPy series. We will deep dive into the DSPy optimizers and also solving multi-hop questions in the upcoming videos. That's all for this video. You can find the link to the Colab notebook below to follow along and implement this. Thanks for watching.